Hello everyone and welcome to the Linux Lighthouse. Today we are diving into Red Hat OpenShift, what it is, why it's important, and how to install OpenShift local, formally code ready container on your laptop. By the end of this video, you will have a working OpenShift environment ready for development. So let's get started. Let's start with what is OpenShift. OpenShift is an enterprise Kubernetes platform developed by Red Hat. It's designed to make deploying and managing containerized applications easier and more secure. But how does it compare to Kubernetes? Let's take a look. So let's look at this comparison. For future security, OpenShift has a built-in security context constraints, rule-based access control, and image security. Kubernetes requires additional setup for security policies. In installation, OpenShift pre-configured and automated setup, Kubernetes manual and complex setup, continuous integration and continuous delivery, OpenShift pipelines Tecton. Kubernetes requires external tools. Networking, OpenShift has integrated SDN and OpenShift routes. Kubernetes uses ingress controllers. Multi-tenancy. OpenShift strong isolation with projects namespaces. Kubernetes limited namespace isolation. Unlike vanilla Kubernetes, OpenShift includes enterprise-grade security, built-in CI-CD, and simplified deployment tools, making it the go-to choice for businesses and developers. Now that we know what OpenShift is, let's set up OpenShift Local, formerly known as Code Ready Containers, CRC, on your machine, laptop, or PC. First, go to the Red Hat Developers site and download OpenShift Local. For that, you need to have an account on developer.redhat.com. So go ahead and register. And the link again is developers.redhat.com slash products slash openshift dash local. I will leave the link in the description below. So now when you press on install openshift on your laptop, once you log in, make sure to go to local. And here you can see the steps that you can take to download the software for openshift to install it on your laptop or PC. And it can be downloaded for Linux, Mac OS, and Windows. The most important thing is the secret file, because without it, you cannot go farther in the setup configuration of OpenShift Local. So make sure to download this compressed file and to download the secret file, both of them in the same place. After the download, I will show you now how to install it on your laptop or PC. Before moving forward, make sure that you have Podman installed on your system and KVM virtualization. As you can see that I saved both files, the compressed and the secret file, in my home folder under the directory downloads in a separate folder, OpenShift local, and then I extracted the file using the command tar space x capital J F and the extraction folder contains a license file and CRC. After that, I copied the CRC program to the bin folder in my home folder. If you don't have one, create one and copy CRC there and make sure that your environment path variable contain that path. After that, run the command CRC version. If you saw the same message like this one, make sure to download the latest one. I downloaded the latest one. I replaced the file in the bin folder with the new one. And I run the command again, CRC version. And now I have the latest one. CRC software installed on our machine. And now let's use CRC to set up OpenShift locally on our system. Now we will start setting up OpenShift local. The first command is CRC setup. Before moving forward, I want to highlight something that make sure that your hardware 
capabilities meet the minimum requirement for having OpenShift local, which is 32 GB memory, minimum 16 GB memory, and at least 40 GB hard disk space free. So now let's run this command and hit enter. And here a question about contributing anonymous usage statistics. For me, I say no. And let the setup continue downloading the needed files to create and generate the VM for us. In case you watched my video about Kubernetes, we use the command minikube to install Kubernetes cluster locally using KVM driver. It is the same idea. CRC, it is somehow like minikube. And here I have my virtual machine manager to show once the CRC setup start creating the VM for OpenShift. And now it is downloading the image that going to be used to create that VM. It will take some time and at least 25 GB going to be downloaded. So I will pause for now and I will come back later. Now the setup finished and you can consider the setup step like a preparation and checking the system plus downloading the needed files and images to create the OpenShift VM locally. If you didn't see any errors and you see the output like this one, your installation is successfully the setup step. Pay attention for any error messages or any missing packages that your system needs to be installed. Here the installation is on Fedora KDE Spin version 41. In case you are going to do the same on OpenSUSE Tumbleweed, there is one package needs to be installed, which is libcap-prox. You need the capabilities management commands to be installed on OpenSUSE before moving forward. After the setup finish, you run the command crc space start dash p space and the secret file we downloaded alongside the package crc. After that, you hit enter and here crc starting the creation of the VM. We can check now it is created and it will take some time to complete and finish the initialization and the installation of the VM. So I will pause and come back later. One thing I just remembered, just in case if you are following this on OpenSUSE Tumbleweed and for some reason you notice an error that there is an image or something cannot be downloaded from internet. So you need to use the command crc config set name server to configure the name server that CRC can use to download the needed packages for OpenShift local. In my case, I have a local caching DNS server running on my system. And you can see here that it is on 127. So CRC is using that to reach internet to continue downloading the needed packages. So the command again is CRC space config space set space name server space and the ip of the name server now congratulations you have openshift running locally but how do we access the web console and interact with the openshift installed let's check that out before starting interacting with openshift the installed openshift we need to configure our environment, our shell to make, to make it easy interacting with the installed OpenShift. As you notice here that you have a username and password as an admin or administrator for OpenShift and for using OpenShift you have the username developer. In general the administrator username is being used when you change or alter OpenShift configuration. When using OpenShift like applying a YAML file or creating a container, you use the developer username, okay? So don't worry about saving this username and password because I will show you how you retrieve this information again. So you can go ahead and run the command CRC status 
to check the status of the installation. Now let me clear the screen. If you remember my previous video about Kubernetes and when we used Minikube to install Kubernetes cluster and after that we were using the command kubectl to interact with the cluster. It is the same scenario here. We used CRC to install OpenShift and after that we need a command to interact with the OpenShift. This command is OC for OpenShift container. To load this command in our environment shell, you run the command eval dollar sign and between brackets crc oc env. And let's show this one first the output crc oc dash env. So instead of every time you are going to use OpenShift command, you need to add this file in your initialization file. For your username you add this in patch rc or the profile for now i can run this one to load the information directly and initialize it in my shell second thing is to have patch completion for oc command so we need to run this command oc space completion space bash and the output redirected to the hidden file oc underscore bash and after running this command you need to source this file in your initialization file dot bash rc or dot profile for the username that you used for the installation for now i will source the file directly in my shell so if you wanted to show the credentials again from the installation you run this command crc space console space dash dash credentials and it will give you the username and the password to use to enter to OpenShift. So now you want to open the web interface for OpenShift to manage OpenShift through the web. You can run this command crc console dash dash URL to get the link that you can paste it in the browser to open your OpenShift. So let's paste it here and we press enter for some reason you need to do this action twice we entered the right password and here you have the OpenShift web interface to you can check the options here or clothes and we can check the compute and the nodes and we can see it is one node. You can use the interface or the command OC to interact with the installed OpenShift. For an example, OC get all to show the nodes and the installation of OpenShift. And you can use also another command like who am I? And you can do another login dash you developer to change the login and when we run OC who am I now I looked in as a developer the auto completion for OC if I write OC space and tap twice it will give me all the parameters that can be used with OC like for example OC version and we can run OC status yeah because we are a developer user so maybe we change log n dash u cube admin and we run the command again and now we have a status as i said cube admin is when you interact with openshift in administration level developer is like regular user for openshift so now you have a test environment with openshift installed so let's say you are done with the installation and you don't want this VM and the configuration, downloaded files, everything. All you can do is CRC stop and this command will power off the VM and stop the CRC demons. And now the VM is stopped. So now we want to clear everything. And here to show you that everything CRC in the home folder of CRC under your home folder dot crc and as you can see the size is 35g so far and this is the structure of the crc folder 
you have a binary when the OC command being installed and the machines is for the VM configuration files. So we can run the command CRC clean up and all. So now everything has been deleted. If we try to see some files for the configuration and look, if we checked the size, it left only the file in the cache or the VM. If you want to create or start a new OpenShift again on your system. So this path is where CRC saved the files and the configuration. You are free to completely delete it. But keep in mind that when you do again set up for CRC, you have to follow the same steps. CRC setup. After that, CRC start with the secret file. And during that, CRC will be downloading the same files again. So keep that in mind. In this section, I will show you briefly and quickly the installation of Red Hat OpenShift on OpenSUSE Tumbleweed. As we did before, we will run the command CRC setup and you notice here that we have an error and the exit status is 1 because the installation trying to the root access for changing capabilities of files. Now we installed the needed packages for capabilities libcap brooks Let's clear the screen and we run CRC setup again. And now the setup step finished with the message your system is correctly set up for using CRC. Use CRC start to start the uh, instance of the OpenShift. Same, we will use the command CRC start space dash p space and the secret file. And don't mind these error messages because CRC is trying to read that file on OpenSUSE which has a different structure from the one on Red Hat based systems like Fedora. And let's check if yeah the VM is created. So the installation is moving forward and the installation has been finished. As before, you can use the same commands for CRC and OC command like here, OC who am I or OC get all. So now you have OpenShift local installed on your OpenSUSE tumbleweed. And that's it. You now have OpenShift running on your local machine. In upcoming videos, we will cover deploying applications, scaling, networking and security. So make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell for more Linux and OpenShift content. Have a question? You can leave a comment below. Till the next one. Happy testing and thanks for watching.